Hi, this is Carol from Yin Yoga Napier here in New Zealand, catching up with Tony Childs, who's in Hawaii. And we're going to chat about her upcoming New Zealand workshops, Rite of Passage into the Arms of Beauty. Many know Tony from her prior life as an award-winning singer, a Grammy Award-winning singer. And I personally passaged through many women's circles listening to Tony's songs. Her voice and work has moved many, and now she's in the world offering a new piece of work. Welcome, Tony. Welcome. Aloha. Aloha. What a beautiful scene in the sea behind you. Yes, it's absolutely gorgeous here. This is Turtle Bay in uh, Oahu, and this is where they're having the festival. It's absolutely epic. It's really beautiful. And so they've got lots of big wave surfing right now going on. The eddy is happening here, as well as there's live music that's happening and all the yoga. So this is Wonderlust, right? That's right. Yeah, beautiful. So, Tony, let's talk about rights the rite of passage into the arms of beauty. It's a two stage. The first is a six hour workshop and then there's a three day retreat following up behind. What inspired you to create this? Well, uh, a song called Because You're Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> uh, it seems that we have a beauty wound and myself included. And this means that we have, we have, a difficult time accepting, advocating for ourselves, loving ourselves. We have, we may have a what I call a radio kafak radio station, a negative radio station in the brain, a monkey mind that's giving you false information. And some of that false information comes from our background, it comes from our family, it comes from our cultures, it comes from our society, it comes from our collectives, whether they be gender collectives or uh, you know or or age collectives. And they need to be dismantled. And they can cause, we can start buying into those as being our truths. And when we do that, our lives aren't really working. We're in survival instead of thriving, we're surviving. And so we need to flip that energy. And so the song, uh, which came from uh, an ascent out of being sick, uh, really, with Graves' disease really helped me um, to encapsulate, encapsulate what I realized was very important yeah. to do. So, so you checked into the island and it sounds like you went into retreat just to actually have time with yourself and make sense of what was going on? Well, yes. I, I, basically, I landed on the island of Kauai and I felt like a failure. My life had just crumbled before my eyes. I didn't yet have the understanding of what was happening to me. Um, three doctors told me I needed to stop my life. I needed to dismantle it, but it was my lifestyle. But something inside of me said, don't take out your thyroid. In 1991, I would create a rite of passage for myself. It would take me eight months to, to, uh, research women's rites of passage from around the world. I had connected with an archetype in a play that I was writing. I interviewed this archetype. Uh, I used a Jungian technique called active imagination. And, I, and, the, and this, this archetype was called the prisoner. And she was a female spirit trapped inside a womanizer, interestingly enough. Mm. And I wanted to know who she was. And I had sketched out on a tour, a concert tour uh, in 1990 uh, of Australia. I had connected with this archetype and sketched out a three act play. And when I got back home to Topanga, where I was living at the time, Topanga, California, uh, I couldn't make a connection again. And so I was seeing a Jungian analyst and he said, why don't you try this act of imagination? He explained me the technique and the next morning I did. And upon going in and visualizing this person in my play and seeing her sitting and touching the fabric of her, her clothing, she asked me, what do, we, what do you want? And I said, I want to interview you. I want you to tell me your story. And she said, first, what I need you to do as I, I realize that you need to write your own rite of passage. You need to study women's rite of passage from around the world. 
And so, and, and also she told me I had a cyst on my left ovary, which I ended up having removed and she was exactly right. I would spend the next eight months researching women's rights of passage and I created my own. And what she told me, this archetype told me, she said, you're not going to be able to live your future, the future you want until you clear your past and the debris of your past. And so I thought these were very wise words. And so I began on that, that journey and I created a very powerful rite of passage. I, I invited 13 friends of mine, all women, and it was one of the most incredibly powerful experiences. It changed the tone of my life. I did Inanna's myth, which is a Sumerian myth. I used that as my base. Saini, I don't, I don't know if this is really helpful, but what I learned from creating that rite of passage, I learned how to let go. Let go in a way that I think people for eons have been doing. I don't think it's anything new at all. I think what I connected with was an old ancient voice, a voice that exists in all of us. And what I want to do in these workshops is connect us to that voice that resides inside of you and it resides inside of me. We need to create greater bandwidth so we can hear the wisdom of our own selves and go on an amazing journey. And for me, a part of that journey is creating our rite of passage deciding where we want to go in our future, laying out a map. It's not a map that gets made perfectly. There's many crooks and crooked miles along the way, but what it does is it, it clears the debris and it creates a greater connection so we can trust ourselves, so we can really hold ourselves and see ourselves as the unique beauties that we are. And that's really what these workshops are all about. This introductory workshop that we have is the preparation for that, where I share more about this story that I just told you. And then what we do is we go into breaking down what is the next eight months of homework that we're going to do. And, uh, and then at the end, we're going to have a three-day immersive workshop where we're going to sleep together, we're going to hang out together, and we're going to hold two very important ceremonies so we can create a new future. Beautiful. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want people to understand that it comes from a place where it's grounded inside of me. Yeah. And because of that, that's where it's coming from. I think it's also very important. I'm not just a singer who's just decided to do this. Exactly. It's something that's happening organically. Yeah. The song, Because You're Beautiful, has really, it's leading the way. And I'm following that. And because of the work that I've done on myself so far in my life that I will continue to unfold, uh, I feel like that's what's pressing from behind. It's, it's feeling that here's a way that we can hold space for each other. We can create huge planetary change mm -hmm. because we've just did the, the work that needed to be done in dismantling the stuff that never served us or our families or our communities or our societies. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's, those are the pieces that I, that's, so that's where I, that's really grabbing me and where this feels really yummy to me. Mm -hmm. It feels really something uh, that we can really do together and we can do it in a playful and a super vulnerable and safe way. Yeah. And that's also critical. Yeah, I agree with you because the old, the old paradigms of scratching the wounds till you bled in order to heal it is not necessarily the way to do it now. That's, that's a very old paradigm. And That's right. And what I also love about what you're talking about, and you may have come across Jean Shinoda Bolan, who, she's a Jungian, um, a feminist Jungian who created a piece of work called The Millionth Circle. And it's based, no, on the, it's based on The Hundred Monkeys. It's a very slim little book. And it's about the effect of when you start one circle or a piece of work and then it widens out and goes to another and to another. By the time we meet, meet The Millionth Circle, we've changed. We shifted the evolution. We shifted the planet. We shifted consciousness into something else altogether. Yes, I totally am in agreement. I think she's completely right on. That's something that's coming through me. I think it's coming through a lot of us. We mm. heard that 100th monkey and it rang a bell. And so it's something that we've been going for, but where is that piece? 
And, you know, this is just a part of it. It's yeah, part it of this really amazing dance. And when you answer your calling, Tony, as you know, you don't have a lot of choice now. 